two main points. I think, first of all, she's trying to invest in people so to get them back into the workforce. So, for example, through the $22 billion for the national health, hopefully that will help a lot of people get back into work. And um, also she's setting a, mor- a new moral tone for politics by um, giving the money for the horizon and the blood infections. Because I think it, the, the, the conservative politicians fail completely to really help those situations. So she's trying to put the country back in the right moral course. And, well, and, they, I, think, I, think, be, I think the yeah. Tories announced the compensation scheme, so certainly for the infected right. blood, but they didn't. But they were slow in acting, weren't they? Well, they it? didn't budget for it. They didn't explain where the yeah. money was going to come from, because of course that would have involved saying we've got to raise twelve billion pounds from tax rises, um, and they, yes. they didn't want to say that. So I think there is an honesty there, which uh, should probably mm. be applauded a little bit more than it has been. But you see that it's not a sexy story because it affects a very specific and limited group of people, whereas some of the, exactly, well, so yeah. does the farming stuff, actually, but the right wing can yeah. use that to whip up anger. Do you think it will work? What, sorry, the, the, what you've described, the mission she has set yeah, herself. Yeah, well, you know what, I think, I think honestly, I believe that the fact she's giving this money to the horizon and for the in blood infections, I think people are going to really admire that. I, I'm, I think she's a great woman, I really do. I'm so inspired Ooh, by her. Blimey. Yeah, I really do, because I think it took a lot of courage for her to do that. To, um, to, it's 14 billion, James, and, and, you know, she's been going on about how we have a lack of money, and she's shown she cares for those people who, who are the the bottom society who suffered the most. I really admire her. So would it be really, really excessive to suggest that she's moving people back into the heart of economic decision making yeah, as, opposed, uh, as opposed to wealth and institutions or businesses? Absolutely. That's very well put. Yeah, she's making, she's making us realise we're all human beings. We have all the same problems and she's trying, well, we don't all, but obviously she's putting the people at the bottom Yeah, and ma- making us care for each other more, I think. But James, can I make one, one, one more point? Of I course. forgot to say about the, the, the uh, higher wages for the lowest paid workers. I think she's trying to encourage a, a lot of English people, maybe British people who wouldn't want to do those jobs to do them because mm-hmm. you know it, they were done by people from abroad in the past and we've never i'm never as not. you as you will know if you listen to the program i'm never convinced by by the, the by the existence of that constituency oh. on anything like the scale that oh. you that you presume here oh, because sorry, because they, well it would mean that they're sitting yeah. at home watching telly all, all day long oh, okay, and, and yeah, not yeah, doing yeah, any sorry, work yeah. which i don't think is yeah. is true but certainly right. that the, the i mean the obvious right. it's mad isn't it that we live in a country yeah. where it could be controversial to say we're going to raise the wages of the lowest workers and then hear from a man worth 1.2 billion pounds yeah. about why that's yeah. a bad idea yeah. as i actually happened yeah. to me this morning these ears these yeah. ears david it's ex- <laughs> an extraordinary yeah. experience i have to tell you that we don't get the kind of money you think we do to put it in to put it in plain terms we as a, as a cereal farmer, the return we get is the same as if the broadca- uh, the, somebody came into your office today and said, James, you like to be a radio presenter. Everybody's wage in the UK as a radio presenter, has, you will now take 35% of what you took. You're only going to take 35% today based on 84 values. Inflation taking it up to today. You're only going to take out 35% of your wage. That's what we get, James. In 1984, I don't, I don't was, understand what you're telling me. Wheat, I, I do apologise. In 1984, James, wheat was £140 a tonne. Right. This August, it was 180 It's got yes. 190 now. It should be 200 But, but again, Steve, almost every... I mean, in 1984... A bit later than that, actually, say 1999, a, a journalist starting on a gossip column on a newspaper could have been earning 40 grand. Now they'll earn 20. But James, but journalists aren't claiming an exemption on inheritance tax. Here we go, James. All right, I, mean, I am listening, Steve, but you understand I have to respond. We diversify to make a living. Yes. Well, most we all diversi- do. We do most podcasts. Diversi- most diversify. What kind of a living do you think we make, James, on 300 acres? What kind of return? Well, I, again, that's an unhelpful question. I heard average a brilliant wage, bloke on, on... Do you listen to the wage. Radio 4 farming programme? Yeah. There was a bloke on this week who has a place in the... Uh, I think, was it in Shropshire or Herefordshire? Somewhere in, on that side of the Midlands, talking about his pumpkin plot, how now a, a, a much smaller fraction of what they do is actual farming. They've got some arable, they've got some livestock, but they've diversified so much that the farm has become the sort of 
point of, of, of interest for the massive mem- numbers of members of the public that come to visit the farm. So you, I can't answer a question like yours because your farm is obviously very different from his. He's doing really, really well. And Here I'm are, sorry that, and I'm sorry that you're not. Everybody's farm is different. No, yes. no, be careful, James. I have a caravan site. Oh. The farm doesn't make any money. Oh. Hardly any money. Here we go, James. Spring corn this year. Yeah. It cost me £300 an acre to grow. Because of the weather, I, don't, I, don't, I, I sense that you're cross with me. I, I'm delighted that you've got a caravan site and, and a good, healthy income across lots of different things. All right, things. you want to know why we shouldn't be in, but, uh, why we shouldn't have the inheritance? And package. I want to know why you deserve an exemption that the bloke who only has a caravan site wouldn't get. The caravan site doesn't get it. He doesn't get an exemption. He pays. He pays inheritance. That, that's tax. what I said. Yeah. Why shouldn't? Why? Why should he pay because that? Because he's only got an. He's only got a caravan site. For which he needs quite a lot of land. So why should he no, not he get an James. exemption while you do? I don't get an exemption with on, a caravan. On the side. farm, I no. I have much land, but the farm yes. is excessively... The value is ten or £12,000 an acre. Well, it depends what you do with it. If you, if you turn it into a caravan site, the value changes. Massively, it increases, yeah. but you can't. So, no, I'm, this is the question site. that we need to answer, and it may be that you've got. A, no, a I, I, need, I, I need to. I need to ask the question. All right, why does your business deserve an exemption on inheritance tax when every other family business in the country doesn't get one? That's all I because want to know. We, because the the cost to us to farm is way above the value. The tax, but the tax man has levied these tax exemptions and it's made the price of land go up and then we can get back to mr dyson for you and so he's bought forty thousand acres yeah i'm gonna have to hit you again with the same question what why should your family business because i think because i can answer this it, I, I, no, we can't it well, but we nor can lots of other family businesses time time. lots of other family businesses can't afford it because of things like divorce as you reminded me so why does your family business does because i think i can answer this I think this is where Labour. Have, I think this is where Labour have got it wrong. I, I, can't I, afford it, James. Well, no, but, but lots of people can tell me that. No one thinks they can afford their tax bill. I think that food production and the wider societal value of a farm is one of the great intangibles that Rachel Reeves has ignored. I think that exactly. the job. I think the job that you do does actually deserve some form of exemption because it provides something that you can't measure on a balance sheet to the country, whether it is environmental or whether it is cultural, whether it is social or whether it is the advancement of food security. So that is what, if, if, you, if I'd rung you and you'd been badgering me to answer that question, that's what I would have said. You're just winding me up, James. <laughs> Aren't you, James? We've been down here before, haven't we? I don't remember if we have. Or we not. have, James. For, for, we were, oh, don't tell we me were, you're a Brexiter. We, no, no, you've no, said that before. No, that, said no. Good. Well, you see, you see what I said, though. So use Global Player, press rewind, and then ring someone else. And when they say, why do you deserve a special... Hit them with all the things that I just said. The problem is the money. If you're, What's yours worth? Like, ballpark. Don't, I don't want to embarrass you. But what roughly is the whole estate worth? Three and a half, three and three and a half million quid, and and people whose estate is worth three hundred and fifty thousand pounds are, are, are eligible for inheritance tax, and you're not. Do you no, see? No, three hundred twenty-five. No, they, they wouldn't be eligible plus for pass, it. Plus, if it's passed, they, they don't have any inheritance tax up to three twenty-five. Yeah, that's general. what that's what I just said. Plus they'll be paying. Passed, I know, I know. They'll be paying inheritance tax on the twenty-five grand above. No, if you pass something, if you pass a house across. Yeah, I, 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 the numbers are right. I think you've misunderstood me. The point is that people who have an oh, estate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. an estate that's worth a fraction of yours, they yeah. will be paying inheritance tax, and you will not, or you were not. We can't afford to, James. Oh, yeah, but you see the point, though. We can't afford to, James. No, you can't just, just keep saying that. Is, is it fair that that person over there with an estate worth a tenth of yours pays inheritance tax on their estate, and you don't? Is it fair that the price of the, the, we subsidise the price of food for all at the public? No, you see, that's the thing. Life's not fair. <laughs> 
<laughs> you look after yourself, Steve. All right, Jim. All right, we'll and, we'll, and we'll talk again. And I, and I hope I hope you feel it was worth ringing in. And I do have some sympathy for your position. Oh, I need to tell you something, James. But, but I'm not. I'm really, but, but I'm, I'm really not going to have sympathy for the farmers who say things like like Jeremy Clarkson said. Oh, I've only bought a farm so that I don't have to pay death duties. Or, or as you've alluded to, James Dyson is. So those people are doing you no favors at all. What irritates me, James? Go what on. irritates me is that the money that we would have to pay if the situation arises is going into the public sector. I was in a surgery yesterday. I go to see a consultant. Yes, I'm sorry. Three to times hear a that. year. Yeah. Three times a year. No, it's okay, James. There are two consultants, six nurses, and a receptionist. One consultant yesterday, six nurses, and a receptionist. Done it for seven years. Six nurses, one receptionist. Yeah. But I wouldn't, they only need two nurses, James. Oh. I've done that for seven years. Okay. I, think, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if many people listening to this will think that we've got too many nurses in the NHS, Steve. James, there is a... No, James... Steve, James, I'm listening to you. A nurse administrator yeah. came to me at the weekend, a, a, a hospital administrator on 60000 a year. Right. Well, she's retiring at 55 in two years' time. She's taking home a £100,000 golden handshake, yeah. £25,000. This is the politics of envy, isn't it, Steve? No, it isn't, James. We'd like some levelling, please. All right. You could you could level people up. Okay. So, so how much is your estate worth again? Three and a half million. I have to sell it to get that, James. And how much but is she have, getting again? Family. What's her golden but handshake again? Every year, a hundred thousand no, pounds. Okay. And what's your estate worth I again? Six, I don't get sixty thousand pounds, James. No, but her pension, her payoff, is a reward for all the work that she's done over the years. And what's your estate same worth again as a reward same. for all the work you've done over the I years? I haven't sold it, James. I've got family to pass it down to keep producing food. Which is why you've we got thirty-five times it. more than she has. That's the way the system is structured. In the private sector, the rewards are much higher. But to end up resenting the rewards that a nurse administrator gets in the public sector. I, I, it's not a great look, mate, all right? And, I, and I, I say that with love. Mind how you go. I look forward to our next conversation. But the point that I'm trying to make, I don't want to go into specifics, okay. um, but the point the point is, is actually, going back to my original point, which is the laugh curve, at what point do they think, actually, do you know what? I won't work I don't know, another five years, maybe, or whatever it might be, yeah. and I'll retire early, or I'll take them against because actually... I, 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 and, I and, and, of them. course, when you factor in the fact that they're going to have to pay £450 more for everyone on their private jet as well. Um, I mean, you really begin to feel the pip squeak. Well, James, that, that, that's the thing that's really affected me about this budget, actually. Well, so, you well, and me well, both. I, I won't yeah, somebody yeah. think about I don't... I, listen, I, it's a bit like Paul Daniels, the late Paul Daniels promising to leave the country if Labour got in. They, 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 they always queue up to do that. Apart from the Pimlico plumbers bloke, I'm not sure anybody ever actually has. But, but the idea that the tax rate now, which has been frozen since 2021... Is, is going to go up um, uh, in 2028 and therefore or that you're going to have to pay a little bit more on your second home investments or the profits you make on your shares. The idea that that's going to make people go to work less is respectfully, Henry, just silly. Well, but, but James, but, but it's not but, even but, an income but, tax increase. But, 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 an income but, tax but, increase might make you think it's not but, worth work. And in fact, the Laffer curve is about income tax. So it's completely irrelevant to everything you've said. Well, no, no that's when the Laffer curve can be applied across all tax purposes. Okay, I don't know which. No, it's tax on topic. earnings. Well, okay, on earnings, on earnings, yeah, but that doesn't that necessarily have to be income tax, though. Well, that's the whole point about the budget, isn't it? That she's she's going after unearned income versus earned income. The Laffer curve, as as a, as a a suggestion of the point at which it becomes pointless working if you're already quite wealthy, is utterly irrelevant to every single thing you've said. In fact, out of charity, I shouldn't have let you talk so much. <laughs> James, do you Henry. not accept? Did you do you not accept? You sound like a concern. You sound like you've been put up to this by someone from central office. The Laffer curve couldn't be less relevant to the conversation that we're having today. And of course, it's 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 just a theory anyway. There's limited empirical evidence to support it, as you well know. But James, the, the, but Henry, it, it, but Henry, it's been proven. It's proven. James. It's not it's proven. proven. It's, okay, James, you're telling me. Okay, that even if, you, if it's proven, it's about income tax, which Rachel Reeves hasn't put up. Just come on, so mate, so take the L. So Henry, so take the L. So, so Seriously, I feel, I feel like so I'm punching a man when he's already on the floor in a puddle of his yeah, own I, blood. I, 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 
I'm not on the floor, James. You're telling me that, um, that if you overtax people... No, they, I'm they... telling you that the Laffer curve isn't what you think it is, and even if it was, it wouldn't be relevant to what Rachel Reeves did yesterday. That's so not an opinion, mate. That's counting. OK, you're telling me, James, that the Laffer curve is oh, only... Here he comes, here he comes is, again. Is only here he relevant. comes again. No, I'm telling you is that the only, idea of people stopping relevant. work because they're paying too much tax on what they get paid for working is both simultaneously ridiculous and the central thrust of the clever phrase that you deployed in the thought that it would somehow bamboozle people listening to this programme. So better luck next time.